Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, let us see sensors and interfacing chapter. In this chapter, we are going to learn instrumentation and control systems, transducer and sensors. We will be learning what is an instrumentation or control system, what are the different types of transducers and sensors available and few examples we are going to discuss in this video. First, let us understand what is an instrument. Instrument is a device that gives us the measure of some physical quantities such as a liquid flow or a temperature or a level of some liquid or pressure or something like an velocity, speed. To measure these physical things, we are going to use an instrument. We can call that instrument as an instrumentation system or we can call it as a measurement system. That measurement system will be generally having a sensor. This sensor is going to sense the physical quantity. What are all the physical quantities? The temperature, it can be a level of liquid, it can be a pressure, it can be a speed, it can be a flow of liquid. Something like this will be called as a physical quantity. This physical quantity will be measured by a sensor. This sensor is going to give some analog output. This analog output will be given to signal conditioning. It will be manipulating the signal into which the signal kind we are going to require for our output. So, what our intention is here, we need to sense the physical quantity through the sensor and we need to condition that signal in such a way that that signal will be required for the next process so that we will be displaying that in a readable format. Right? The signal conditioning output will be given to the signal processor. This can be any processing unit, it can be a microcontroller also. So, that provides an input to the display. Suppose if you have a 7 segment display or LED or LCD display, the physical quantity what we are going to measure will be displayed here, right? And also we can record that. Whatever the value we are going to give, we can record and keep it for our reference. And also we can take that as a data output. This will be a measurement system or any instrumentation system. And sometimes a control system is very main component in a measurement system. Why? Because there may be a chance of error while sensing that physical quantity. So what we are going to do for that, let us see here. There will be a device called comparator. In OPAM chapter, you might have seen or you might have learnt this comparator. What this comparator is going to do, it will be having a standard level of voltage that will be compared with the input system or a feedback will be there that will be compared with the input. If it is more or less or if, if these two are equal, the op-amp output will be obviously zero. Means here comparator is checking these two inputs. So if there is an error signal, if there is any difference between these two values, there will be the output of the op-amp that will be considered as an error signal. That will be given to the power amplifier. What this amplifier is going to do? It will improve the signal or here the power amplifier is required to make the correction. Whatever the error it is producing, or the system will be having a error that will be corrected by the power amplifier. That will be given to control device. Control device will take a decision that what is to be controlled, what is the output to be. So we are going to get an output finally. Again, we are taking that as an input to the sensor. That sensor will be giving some output and we are again conditioning the signal coming out of the sensor given to the input of the comparator. This comparator again compares these two. Once the power amplifier correct that error signal, the next stage when there is a feedback loop, the error will be minimized. So error will be zero. After error will be zero, control device say that there is no error so that we can take the output. So this is why a comparator and this arrangement of feedback is required to make the system more stable, error free. So this is an control system, it is available with the measurement system when it is required. Next we need to understand what is a transducer. Transducer is a device which converts one form of energy into other form. Suppose if you take a loudspeaker, you might have low, low, loudspeaker is a device or we can call it as a transducer that converts a low frequency electric current into audible sound. So a low frequency signal or a low voice signal can be converted into a high voice signal by using a loudspeaker that can be called as a transducer. Similarly, we will be having a microphone. In microphone, if we give the low frequency signal, that we, an audio signal, that is a physical quantity. 
that will be converted into electrical quantity in microphone but in loudspeaker it is a transducer that converts a low frequency electric signal into audible sound means it is converting electrical signal to physical quantity as a voice microphone is a device that converting a physical quantity that is voice into an electrical quantity similarly we can convert a pressure a kind of sound pressure it is so sound pressure variations will be converted into voltage here so these kind of devices which converts one form of energy into other will be called as transducers so loudspeaker can be called as an output transducer and a microphone can be called as an input transducer here you can observe in the figure it is shown there will be a microphone where small voltage audio signals will be given this is an audio signal it is not electric signal so microphone output will be an electric signal that can be readable by the amplifier amplifier is going to improve the signal and it will be given to the loudspeaker here also it is an electrical signal here also it is an electrical signal once it is coming out of the loudspeaker it will be an audio signal that will be called as physical signal so physical quantity will be the output here and input is also a physical quantity but the two kind of devices we are using here is one is the output transducer another one is the input transducer so here is an example of thermocouple and uh, audible transducer that is a speaker what is thermocouple there will be a device called temperature detector means we can measure the temperature by using that uh, device the output will be uh, recorded or displayed in the system so what is thermocouple here it is an electrical device that consisting of two dissimilar electrical conductors so you can observe here there will be two ends means it will be having two electrical conductors forming an electrical junction a thermocouple produces a temperature dependent voltage the voltage of the thermocouple will be depending on the temperature if the temperature varies in that junction the output will be affected means the output voltage will be there will be an variation that effect will be called as seaback effect in the conductor when the two dissimilar conductors are connected together so the generated voltage can be interpreted to measure the temperature variation in the temperature leads to variation in the voltage here that measure will be called as a temperature detector if the voltage is at this level that will be corresponds to some temperature if the voltage will be higher than that that will be corresponds to higher value of temperature and then we will be having sensors sensor means it is a special kind of transducer again sensor and transducers will be always go hand in hand sensor is also a special kind of transducer that is used to generate an input signal to a measurement or instrumentation or control system means we have seen in instrumentation system or in a measurement system the starting device will be a sensor this sensor is going to produce a signal it will be a electrical signal so we say signal produced by a sensor is an electrical quantity or electrical analogy of a physical quantity physical quantity is a temperature so if the sensor is a temperature sensor it is converting a physical quantity temperature into electrical quantity means here electrical quantity can be a voltage or current so other physical quantities like distance we can measure we can measure the velocity we can measure the acceleration temperature pressure and also a light level so these are the different sensors available for us to detect these physical quantities that device will be called as a sensor the choice of sensor is governed by a number of factors how to choose a better sensor if the accuracy of the sensor is more it is measuring every degree celsius will be measured as a voltage so it it means accuracy is more similarly resolution of output and cost effective and physical size of the device these are the parameters to choose a sensor and sensors can be categorized as two types one is active sensor and other type is passive sensor what do you mean by active sensor means as name itself says that sensor is always active it doesn't require any external supply to operate it will generate current and voltage without using any external supply external supply is not at all required in active sensor if it is a passive sensor it requires source of current or voltage it requires an extra voltage to be connected to operate that will be called as passive transducer and also we can categorize the sensors in terms of the output it is going to give means a digital sensor or it will be an analog type 
means output of the analog sensor is a analog signal it can take any one of infinite number of voltage or the current levels since it is an analog signal we can say there will be an infinite values we can get if it is a digital sensor what we are going to get we are going to get only two values two discrete states we can say whether on or off state or low or high state or logic one as logic zero what we have seen in digital circuits right so these are the different categories of sensor we can categorize it depending on the input supply required or not that will be called as active and passive and the output of the sensor depending on the output of the sensor we can categorize as digital sensor and analog sensor and here are the different types of transducers and sensors available you can see here the first one is to measure the angular position angular position in the sense if it is in a industry if something is rotating we need to identify the angle of rotation up to which angle it is rotated in terms of a voltage or in terms of a degree like that so angular position can be measured by using a resistive rotatory position sensor where the resistance of the device is going to be varied it will be called as a rotatory tack potentiometer you can observe here this is a rotatory position sensor device it will be called as a rotatory potentiometer where this is a thing or an angular momentum shaft this shaft will be taking a an angular moment so from this end we will be having one point of v out other point will be connected to the device or the movable wiper so depending on the movement you can observe here there will be a variation in the resistance so we are going to get the output point which is connected to the v positive or zero volts depending on the position of the this wiper so if this wiper comes into zero position so that we can say the output will be zero if it is goes to this position here we can say it is having a maximum voltage means at this position voltage will be maximum at this position output will be the voltage will be minimum so that depending on the voltage what we are going to get we can say this is taking an angular momentum of this degree similarly for the linear moment you can observe here there is a resistance and we are going to measure the voltage from this end so if the resistance is connected somewhere here the voltage will be different if the resistance of the conductor somewhere here the voltage will be different so the momentum will be in this direction vertical direction this will be called as linear potentiometer this will be an angular potentiometer so the angular position can also be measured and also a linear position can be measured and then we will be having uh, one more device called lvdt linear variable differential transducer here also we can measure the vertical or the horizontal moment or we say the linear moment this will be an armature this is going to move in this direction vertical or in horizontal direction so how we are going to measure this means we will be having a primary coil and also the two secondary coils so if this shaft is moving in this end means it will be in this position the more flux introduced in the secondary coil with respect to this coil the output of this coil will be zero why because the mutual inductance is uh, happening here means the voltage generated by the secondary coil in this end if we compare the voltage at the sec this secondary coil and also this secondary coil the voltage difference will be there depending on v out we can measure where actually the position of the this shaft will be suppose this shaft will be presented somewhere here the voltage of the secondary coil is more depending on the position the voltages of the primary coil will be linked with the two secondary coils by this way we can also measure the linear position this device will be called as linear variable differential transducer and this device will be operated with a phenomenon of mutual inductance here you can observe this is lvdt similarly we will be having tachometer and uh, rotating vane flow sensor you can here you can observe liquid flow sensor and resistive linear position sensor and also few other sensors also available and light level sensor is one of the important sensor we are going to use to measure the light so you can see an ldr ldr is a device it is going to respond 
to the light falling on that when there is a more intensity of light fall on that the voltage will be more the voltage we are going to measure from the output of the sensor will be more if the light in intensity is less the output will be less means it will be having a photo detector photo detector is a device that will respond to the light intensity so this device will be used in light sensors lights light dependent resistor it will be called as ldr whenever the light is sufficient it gives some constant value when there is a light drops means because of some other condition light drops this device is going to get, give different result so this device can be used when to detect the light present when there is no light in the system so this ldr can be used as a light sensor and also you can see this light sensors are going to be used to detect the available sunlight for a uh, cricket match if the sufficient sunlight is there they will continue the test match if the sufficient light is not there they might have using artificial lights right to continue play so if it is uh, the intensity is not sufficient we can call off the match also so light sensors are useful in such cases then we will be having a liquid level sensor we can measure the liquid level using a capacitive proximity switch and also a diffuse uh, scan proximity switch also and also we will be ha having a pressure sensor to measure the pressure applied that will be uh, a micro switch pressure sensor it can be a differential pressure vacuum switch piezo resistive pressure sensor also and proximity sensors also we are going to use uh, by using an inductive method or capacitive method also so these are the different sensors available and to measure the stress and strain uh, by using a resistive method we can uh, detect that stress and to uh, detect the temperature we have seen the thermocouple and uh, some device will be called as a thermistor some semiconductor temperature sensors also available and we can also measure a weight and vibration in the system so these are the different physical phenomena we can measure using a sensor and transducer arrangement so in detail explanation you can see here in this table i am not go in detail with respect to each and every sensors few important sensors i have explained here the angular position and the linear position by using lvdt and uh, light sensors are important in the next video we will be see how the actuators are going to behave what are the output devices we will be having with respect to the embedded system is concerned thank you